Money. Okay, we lit it just like a fuse, so no need to pick and choose. Welcome to 2020, where we do more than interviews. The hottest beat coming through, dropping knowledge on honor. You get a beat at the front of you with the truth that they offer you. Yeah, hands up, we doing it for the culture. To give artists and businesses more exposure. Keep it real and stay solid just like a boulder. It's about to go all the way down, can get no lower. Chasing my dreams, know that they get no slower. But if I stay running, I promise they getting closer. Moreover, success, my older. And if you're sleeping on me, I'm waking them up like vultures. I told you, coming from the land with the tide roll. Well, we'll be on the whole different vibe though we like to ride slow and keep our windows tinted so you really can see us like stevie wonder waking up with his eyes closed yeah got the kind of flow that rock the boat on my 16s of pounds of dough and if you figure you can hang with me on the mic then grab some rope matter of fact better grab some hope while you at it we keep it live it's time to tune in turn up the sound on what you're using it goes so hard i think it's bruising the show is 2020 no need to zoom in yeah But you know, it's been rocky. Like you said, like right. we were both growing. Mm. You know, when we met, I was like 18 and he was 20. Um, so you know, we dated off and on here and there. You okay. know, like like you said, we was we was both growing. You know, neither one of us really had fully knew ourselves. Right. You know, but I don't I don't regret it though. You know, like I said, we we go through things, but we make it work. Mm. So let me ask you this, and this as I'm asking you this from the perspective of being a woman. Um, did you feel that pressure of getting married prior from life outside? Yes. How do you deal with it? I did. I was just like, I'm getting married when I want to, you know, mm -hmm. like I want to be married. You know, my yeah. parents have been married. I'm 32 and they've been married all my life, you know, mm. so. Wow. That I want that, you know. I've right. seen my parents have it. I never, I'm thankful and grateful I never seen my parents fuss and fight and argue. You know, like I've seen other people and I'm like, I don't know nothing about that. Like my mom and dad was loving, you know, like mm -hmm. they was hugging and kissing and, you know, calling each other baby and, you know, like that. I want that. Mm. So, and my husband as well, you know, he's 34 and his parents been together all his life. So we knew that we both wanted that, you know, we seen what it could be, but we, you know, you're young, you just be doing stuff, you know, but it, but like, it was pressure from lots of people, you know, telling us, y'all need to get married, y'all need to get married. But we got married when we wanted to get married. Mm. And I, we didn't even tell anybody. We just was like, we ready now. And we just went and did it. <laughs> and then we was, oh, we had got married yesterday. <laughs> that's cool. I, I think that's cool because you, you did it on your terms. Yeah. You agreed with each other. Nobody on the outside. I'm saying when you meet the right woman, she's going to help you get to where you need to be if you're not, you know, if you're not all the way there yet. Sometimes that's what it takes. Right. That's what I believe. For every man, there's a queen out there for him. I recommend this to some of my clients that have, you know, relationship fears or issues. You know, I tell them to write a letter to their self. Write two letters, actually. The first letter I want you to write um, an apology letter to yourself for any bad relationships that you've been in or any mistakes that you hold yourself accountable for, you know, in a relationship. Like, some people beat themselves up about, maybe if I hadn't did this, we would still be together, you know. Write an apology letter to yourself, apologizing for anything you feel like you've done wrong, mm -hmm. or anything that, you, that has been done wrong to you. And you know, some people are like, I, he did this, I should have been left. Or she did that, I need to leave her alone but you, you still stayed. So write an apology letter to yourself. Apologize to yourself for all the heartache that you've caused, all the heartache you feel you've allowed into your life, you know? And once you do that, then you write another letter to yourself, but what is your ideal person? If you could have your dream person, you know, like, I want this woman, you know, she's gotta cook. And I mean, go into detail. 
if you love red hair, I want a woman with red hair <laughs> that can, you know, that cooks this type of food and she believes in this and she's this type of mother, you know, and she's loving and caring and respectful, you know, a everything you could think of, like, and I mean in every specific detail, you know, go into detail. And I know that works for myself, you know, well, mm -hmm. I know it works because I did it for myself. My letter, I wrote, um, my apology letter came later, actually. I, I did first the letter to of uh, the man that I wanted, you know. I wanted somebody who was who was balanced with his masculine and feminine, you know. Mm. I wanted somebody who was who was loving and, you know, strong, um, happy, you know. I wrote all these things and there was a couple things that I didn't put in the letter, you know. And it's like once I got this man and he's all of this you know, then I'm like, dang, I should have put this in the letter because, you know, this needs some tweaking a little bit over here, you right. know. So, yeah, that's why I say go into complete detail about mm. everything that you want. And once you have that letter, you'll you'll know when you've met that person. Like, this this is them. This is that person I wrote about. But you, you have to put it out there. Mm. And that also helps you understand as well what it is that you want or when you don't want because somebody can ask you what type of woman you want you have to think about it you know but once you get to writing more of it is going to come to you on you know what it is that you want or don't want mm. it's just people are just so judgmental you know and they're so close-minded you, you know like for instance i don't I don't teach my kids about Jesus. I've never, okay. I've never talked to my kids about Jesus. Okay. You know, like the only thing my kids know about Jesus is what they hear from other people. Okay. And he's not a topic of discussion in our house. We don't owe him anything. Okay. But you know, that's my opinion. Um, so, you know, a lot of people don't think like that. Mm -hmm. You know, they say I'm the devil, and you know I. I need to go to church, you know, <laughs> they'll say stuff like that. And, you know, I'm corrupting my kids because I'm not teaching my kids about Jesus and he died for our sins. Mm. You know, I, I don't believe that. I don't care if that's what you're telling me, you know, right. I, I don't believe it. There's nothing you can say to me to make me believe that. So, like I said, these conversations I can have with my kids on why I don't believe that. You mm -hmm. know, like, and why I don't teach you about him, you know. And my kids are open-minded. They're like, oh, you know, okay. Even my six-year-old. Like, my six-year-old asks questions that people who are older than me that never even thought about asking, you know. Um, another topic with schooling. Okay. Everybody, well, I wouldn't say everybody, but majority of the people that I know, believe kids belong in school. These kids got to go to school. They got to, they, that's where they need to be. I don't feel like that. I feel like these my babies and they need to be with their mama. You know, these my kids. Why are you gonna tell me I just got to give my kids away to these strangers and let them raise them. Let them figure out what my kids like and don't like. That's a good these point. my kids. I want to do that. I want to, I want to see what they can do. You know, mm. like in school, they tell you what you can do, what you can't do and what you're going to learn. Well, my kids, you tell me what you want to learn mm. and we're going to learn it together. If I don't if I don't already know, you know, what do you like to do where in school? It's not like that. You learn about the same stuff over and over and over year after year. You know, Christopher Columbus and all of that, you know, all of that other stuff and the pronouns and action verbs and but here I am 32 and I want to tell you that no one has ever came to me and said I give you free rent if you can tell me these fractions mmm that's a good point I go apply for this car and I gotta have a $5,000 down payment because my credit score in the 7-800 club but not nowhere in school did, did they teach you that that's right so that's what I teach my kids I teach my kids about credit I te tell my kids, you need to have land, and I tell them, 
I, I just tell them that they can have anything. You know, like, there's been times where I'd be broke, don't have no money, but I'll never tell my kids that. If they ask for something, we're not spending our money on that today. It's not important. Mm. Never, I never tell my kids, I'm broke, we ain't got no money, we can't afford that. I don't do that because I don't want that in my kids' mind that that can happen. I feel like if I never say those words to you, then you'll know nothing about those words. And you'll know that you can do and be anything. Like I try to keep them really involved with my business so they can see that. Mom's at home with us, but her cash app, making money sounds. Know that I can be at home with my kids and make money. Like that's what I want my kids to be exposed to. Mm. They're not exposed to that at school. No. You know, you gotta sit down and you can't use the bathroom without asking permission. No, if you gotta pee, go. Right. You know, but people don't feel like that. They feel like I'm messing my kids up and I got my kids missing out on things. What are they missing out on? What? I don't understand. My child is eight years old and got a business plan. <laughs> she makes money all the time and she's eight. Like, I want you to get all the eight year olds out the school that you think she need to be in and talk to them and see what they plans are for the future. See what they got going on. See how they spend their day. Ask them some questions. Ask them how much money they made today. Ask them what they learned and see the difference. You know, like I'm not downing anybody, you know, everybody has their right to their own opinion. You know, like I love everybody. I love all the kids, you know, so I don't mean any disrespect, you know, to nobody mm -hmm. on how they're raising their kids. It's just how I'm raising mine. And it's like, I want more people to feel how I feel. And it's like everybody else wants me to feel how they yeah, feel. So. Like yeah. these kids need to be in school. No, they don't. And I asked them, I'm like, okay, think about it. All them years you spent in school, what really helped you get to where you are right now? If you anywhere, you know, yeah. like I, I went to school kindergarten all the way through 12th grade even did some college but none of that helped me get to where I am right now I don't want my kids to go through all of that just to find out dang <laughs> Christopher Columbus ain't got shit to do with paying this light bill <laughs> <laughs> like Fact. Fact. the pilgrims and Indians is not putting me on no land you know like it's just a waste to me I recently had a conversation with a friend of mine. She's, she's a dancer. She thinks abstractly like I do. And I presented to her the concept of God. And the, the abstract idea I had was when people think of God, they think of this person with a beard and long hair <laughs> with, you know, a halo around their head. They stay in the sky. Yeah, that sits on the cloud watching Netflix. I don't think that's the case. Yeah. Me I think too. God is a concept. I think God is the universe yes. and how it responds. Yes. And that's why I teach my kids. God is everything but nothing. Yes. God is everywhere. God is the trees. God is the ocean. Yes. God is the flowers. God is the sun, the moon, the stars, the universe. Right. That is God. And how you treat people how you act is how god the universe is going to treat you yes if you're good to people god the universe will be good to you yes. if you're giving and kind god the universe will be giving and kind to you that's how i teach my kids and my kids they're i don't even know how to explain it my kids they're just they're just amazing you know like I sit back and I watch them and I'm like, oh, they do listen to me. Mm. You know, like I might catch them speaking to a tree, telling the tree that it is beautiful, you know, That's or, cool. you know, and it's like, wow, you know, or they'll be doing. And I'd be like, what you doing? Um, just the other day, my little girl, my eight year old, she was like in a corner, like she was just so intrigued with something. And I was like, what are you doing? And she was like, I'm working on my master plan. Okay, then you go right. right ahead. And when you get done working on your master plan, you come show it to me, you right. know? And she's like, all right. Um, 
my son, he is always, he used to, sometimes he did, still does pick flowers okay. for me, right? Um, he loves picking flowers and giving it to me. But sometimes he'll come to me and he's like, I seen some pretty flowers I wanted to give to you, but I didn't want to hurt the universe today. Mm. I didn't want to pick those flowers, even though they was pretty. And I said, I want to give these pretty flowers to my pretty mama, but I didn't want to hurt the universe. So I just left the flowers there and came and told you about them instead. Wow. And sticks. That's powerful. Right? And I'm like, so I am doing a good job. I am raising them right, you know, because I never would have thought of that, what you just said to me. The gravity of your actions. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Damn. Hmm. Because my, my little eight-year-old ass would have, you know, would have thought. Yeah. But Wow. Yeah, that, that makes me wonder. And wow. It, I feel like those that type of reasoning is what the peacemakers and the decision makers of this future that we're going to have need to have. Like there is a consequence for every action you take, every step you take, every word you utter is that. And I try to instill that in people I meet. Like I, I hate hearing people speak negatively about themselves. Me too. I'm like, don't say that. Why? Why did you say right. that? Why like, who you... taught you that? Right. Who raised you? Because <laughs> right. you were, you know, and I like, you are everything. You are beautiful. You are smart. You're handsome. You know, whatever the case may be. And my kids, they do that now mm. too. Like, my dad, he, um, he's been battling cancer for mm. almost four years now. I'm sorry. And... Um, in the beginning, you know, my, my kids are little, they're still young, six, right. eight and 11. And he, like I said, he's been battling for four years. So they was much younger and they used to be sad all the time, you know, and they're like, is our papa going to die? You mm. know, like, but now they're just, it's like, that doesn't even come to their mind anymore. Like, I don't know what's going on in their mind, so I don't really know how to explain it. But just their actions, you know, like they stopped asking them questions. They stopped being so concerned. And now they're just all about showing him as much love as they can show him. You know, they want to help him do everything. But it's like they're not sad. They don't speak, right. you know, wonder what if this happens. They just stop doing that. You know, it's like I just noticed this change within them. And now they're like, we're going to do this for Papa. And we're going to do that for Papa. And on days where he's like... I don't want to get out of bed right now. You know, they'll go in there and they'll sit in the bed with him and they'll tell him stories and they put on little plays, you know, that they done That's made cool. up. <laughs> it's like, but I love that, seeing them interact like that. And, and they're, like I said, they're no longer asking, is Papa going to die? You know, like they don't say that anymore. It's like they're just using this time for what it should be used for. And it's like there's grown people that don't understand that mm -hmm. you know they're still worried about the what ifs and they're still sad instead of taking advantage of this and making the best out of it i'm like oh, people could learn some stuff from my kids because mm -hmm. i learned from them but if they was in school me and my kids wouldn't know nothing about none of this if they was right. in school hmm. that's interesting um that outlook i just started having that outlook that your kids are having um a year ago um, last year, uh, my frat brother, a good friend of mine, passed away uh, on Valentine's Day. Uh, kidney failure. Went away in his sleep. And um, it's always shocking to see death from someone you know. Same age, same, you know, same generation, you know. It, it took me back. And I, I was... The way I try to cope with death is I try to stay busy. And uh, when I got the news, I was shocked. But when I got home, I just kept cleaning up. And when I was forced to stop, I broke down. But then it was like a light switch came on. There's a shot clock going off behind me. Every day I wake up, that clock is going down. I can sit here and be afraid and be scared. Or I can get as much shit done as I can and leave the best impact I can. And that's how I've been looking at it. Um, we've had more deaths in my family and friends over the years, but it's like solidifying my resolve that I have to be great. 
I, I have to affect and reach out to everyone that dares to dream, that has an idea, whatever their passion may be, I have to reach out to them and talk to them and let them know that, yo, what you do is excellent. Let's display it to the world. So yes. that's, yeah, I completely understand what they're thinking. And uh, my mother this past summer uh, was diagnosed with glomerulosclerosis, long word. It basically is where the blood vessels in your kidneys harden and so eventually they will stop functioning. Now this is the catch. It's incurable, but the time frame that it would take to, you know, materialize or basically kill you uh, could be anywhere from two to 20 years. And so my brother, I let him know and he burst into tears and again, that mindset from losing my friend reminded me that, hey, yo, she's right here. <laughs> you know, you're crying, but she's right here. So there's no need to cry, you yeah. know, be with her, do stuff, hang with her, you know, talk to her. And I talk to her every day, literally every day. Uh, we, we don't get along, you know, you know, all the time because we're the we're alike and we butt heads. But, you know, it just solidified that one day. I'm going to look for her and she's not going to be here. So what will I have to reflect on all the times that I cried and got upset or the times that I kicked it with her? Yeah. So I understand that. All right. Well, that being said, thank you for tuning into another episode of A Business Minute.